Well, hello and a very warm welcome to this year's Racing Post Greyhound Derby preview show. The big one has arrived. £175,000 up for grabs. Six rounds of action, five weeks of racing at Toast. You'll be able to watch all the action, of course, live on Racing Post Greyhound TV. But we're in good company for this preview show. Open race correspondent of the Racing Post, Tony Bullen, joins me. And uh, we're like kids at Christmas, Tony. Yeah, certainly are. I mean... Connections are keen to enter their dogs. Oversubscribed Derby. Uh, many was expecting it might fall short, but obviously plenty keen to enter this year. And it is probably one of the most wide open derbies that I've seen for a long time. Absolutely, yeah. We're really looking forward to it. And uh, joining us on the line on Skype as well is uh, top broadcaster, Irish Greyhound Racing expert, the voice of Shelbourne Park as well, Ian Fortune. How are you, Ian? And uh, you're sending over a good team again, you guys. Yeah, very strong team. Obviously, yeah, 43 runners. Um, yeah, some real talent there. Um, it, it's quite a deep team to a point where you sort of struggle to find out which are really our, our top two or three. There, there's probably 10 or 12 dogs there that could, could nearly dispute us. But um, no, very strong team and yeah, feeling confident. Feeling confident. Four, four Irish trained greyhounds made the final last year, but they are naught from three in toaster derbies. Right, what is the greyhound derby then? Well, the greyhound derby is the pinnacle of greyhound racing. The final will be worth £175,000, sponsored by Star Sports and Toaster Racecourse, Saturday the 25th of June, but we kick off on Thursday night, first round heats across Thursday, Friday and Saturday night. The format is we start with 192, there are 32 first round heats and the field will half each week until we get down to that Super 6 in the final. Tony, it's a real test of, of both a greyhound and the trainer looking after the dog. You've got to hold that form, recover the dog and prepare it for the next round. Yeah, I mean, there's that theory some are only going into it 70% and they're going to creep forward each round, but I'd be firing on all cylinders myself. I mean, some of these heats that we've seen drawn out in the first round, Dave, there's no margin for error. Only the A game will suffice and my dog would be ready to do the clock in the first round. Don't worry about that. And Ian, um, obviously a little bit different for, for some of the Irish guys. A lot stay. Um, the likes of, of Graham Holland, I know Pat Buckley will be staying as well. They stay every year. Some will travel over. I know Peter Cronin regularly travels over throughout. So slightly different, but everyone knows exactly what is asked of, of both themselves and their dogs heading into this. Yeah, absolutely. You got to remember these, these trainers know their dogs inside out. If they didn't think they'd handle the travelling, they'd probably stay. And um, there will be a few others that will stay. Liam Dowling generally stays as well. But there will be a few that'll make the journey for the first week or two, uh, and then decide on whether they're staying or not. Yeah, judging upon how their dogs are performing. But like, don't get me wrong. If they're there in the third round, all the Irish trainers will give their dogs the very best opportunity to go all the way. OK, yeah, and as I mentioned, uh, across those six rounds, a key date for your diary um, is the third round, which will be on uh, Saturday the 4th of June, which is the first time the field all race on the same night. We've got the first round heats across three nights, the second round across two nights, but on Saturday the 4th of June, you'll see them all. You're guaranteed to see the Derby champion on that night, eight third round heats there. Right, 12 months ago, Tony, um, Toaster had been reopened. Um, we were heading back there after two years at, at Nottingham. Um, we were kind of stepping into the derby, a little bit unknown. The boxes had been changed. We were still kind of finding our feet at this new toaster. What have, what have we learned in the last 12 months and, and from that derby? I mean, toaster is a track that's still evolving, uh, Dave, in fairness. You've, you've, obviously, with the traps, I still think there's, the traps are a little bit of a lottery with the, with the bingo breaks. I prefer... If I had a dog myself, I'd like to be in three and four every time. You can give me the season ticket for trap three. Because going into the derby, we'd, we'd switch the boxes and we'd be like, right, you, you don't want trap mm. one, dogs are not coming away. You still think that's a big factor? I'd rather, yeah, even if I was a bang railer, I'd prefer to be drawn just off because you can still make the bend. You, I think if, if, if you're going to trap better from a middle slot, it offsets being bang, drawn, bang on the rails. If you're missing it slightly on the inside, you can still get to the desired position. I also like a big frame dog. I think every sinew of strength for big built dog like your 35 plus kilo dogs. I think they fare better than those 29, 30 kilo dogs. Well, the winner last year was a big old lump. Yeah. Thong Falcon. Agree. And um, I, I think obviously the track's running a lot quicker um, of what we've seen. I mean, there was a theory that the 29 second barrier was going to be smashed last year. It wasn't. I think it will this year. I think the 29 second barrier will be broken uh, comfortably probably a couple of times. 
Okay, well, yeah, Sporting Chile 28.99, set the new track record in a trial state just a couple of weeks ago. Um, we'll have a little look at that later on. Ian, um, what about yourself? What have you made of Toaster? Um, and how do you think some of the Irish dogs are handling this, uh, I suppose, Toaster version 2, if you like? Yeah, I think most are, seem to be handling it quite well. Um, obviously, we've seen in the past one or two of our dogs come over and haven't really handled the place. It's not a track that's very similar to many tracks in Ireland with, you know, you know, one or two dogs you'd say that have handled Limerick quite well, have gone on to, to handle Toaster quite well. It'd be interesting to see, but I, I tend to agree with everything Tony just said. I think you do need a strong running track, but you need a dog with a bit of early speed. Um, I feel that trap one, if you are a bingo, if you're a bingo breaker, a dog with early speed, you want to be in the middle. If you lack one yard of early, one isn't a bad place to be um, because you know yourself, if you, if you come away well and you're, you, you're, you can't quite hold your position into the corner. Three isn't a great place to be with, with something charging up the inside, perhaps recovering after a slow start, getting there, and there could be a bit of traffic. So if I had a strong runner, I'd prefer them in one. But if I have a bingo breaker, I think Tony's right, three or four. I'll take the season ticket for trap three also if you, if you offer it. Yeah, an interesting um, point going into this derby, Tony, is that there's not many seeded dogs. I think a lot of people are sort of going, let's go with a railer and hope we get three or four. Uh, me personally, I think that could be a mistake. I think it could be dogs crossing lines on that run to the corner on the inside. Um, you, if you can find a, a fast starting seeded dog that's just going to go up in a straight line, rip to the turn, miss all the trouble on the inside, I think that might be a way to go. Yeah, look, I mean, look, this is the biggest race of, of the sport, the derby. So sport is about trying to have an edge. You want to do the best for your dog. So obviously if trainers feel that they can get away with tactical seeding, they will. And I, I can't fault them for, the, for doing that. I mean... Um, personally, I think you're right. I think there's, they're overthinking it nowadays. I think you should just seed what you think that your dog needs yeah. rather than what you're hoping he's going to get drawn. Which is what Pat Rosney famously did last year mm. and it ultimately sort of mm. proved the undoing of his dog, which was a shame. Yeah, but I, again, that's why I think like I prefer a little bit of a big dog, something that can stand on their feet, not necessarily a, an out-and-out -out front runner. Uh, I mean, in recent weeks, we've noticed at Toaster, dogs do come from off the pace there. It's not... It's a test. Toast has always been a test, but the way the track's running, some of these sprinting type of dogs, like your Swift Iconics and them type of dogs, they could be getting home still. Yeah, we'll see. It's very uh, interesting. That summer going, quick track, catch me if you can. That'll be a, certainly a part of the derby. And a big part of derby final night will be the, the Festival of Racing, Saturday the 25th of June. You can watch all the action live on RPG TV. You'll be able to see the stars throughout this Greyhound Derby. Starts on Thursday all the way through. Um, the final itself on the 25th of June. Of course, try and get to the track and watch the action. If you can't, as I say, Sky 437, Freesat 250, Freeview 264, and on the stream as well, www.sportystuff.tv. There will be a bitches competition, a six bend competition, British bred hurdle, puppy, the famous Durando marathon, two laps of the track, the derby plate consolation, sprint competitions as well. It'll be a real festival of action. So this is as good as it gets in, in greyhound racing. And let's look now at some of the contenders because we're going to bring in the outright book um, and the defending champion, Thorn Falcon, is generally a 16 to 1 chance. His favourite with most firms. Park Blake is contesting favouritism with him as well. A couple of dogs that are, have proved very, very popular with um, the co sponsor, Star Sports. I know they've laid uh, big, big money. Savannah Bow, Bob Slade Dream, Ballin the Bowler Red is, is their biggest loser. And, and Park Blake. Um, for a lot of the firms, they're reporting is their, their bogey, the one they want to get beat. Um, but you can see the defending champion is going to take some beating as well this year. Lots and lots of Irish names on that list. Ian, how do you rate the, the Irish challenge as a whole this year? I think it's a very strong challenge. Um, I think there's a lot of depth. Um, my, my, my thing going through the betting lists, I, I, I've tipped away at a few um, just because of prices. Like there's dogs in at 50 to 1 and 40 to 1 in the Irish that would every day of the week beat some of the dogs in the 20 and, and, and 25. So I don't think there's enough. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of movement still in this market. And it's it's a competition where each year I generally get involved earlier in the English Derby than I would with any other anti-post market. Um, I think this year I'll probably do plenty of business after the opening round because I think I think the market, there's a lot of movement still to come in this market. Obviously, that's the same every year, but I think this year in particular, I think there's going to be an awful lot of movement. There's one or two dogs in the opening round. I'd expect to, to fly and I'd expect their price to be considerably cut. Part Blake, um, Part Blake and Kulavani Calvin are very short in the market of, in, in terms of 
compared to their Irish counterparts because it's all for money. It, it, it's not, you know, that they're lengths and lengths better than some of the other dogs that we'll touch upon later on. It's just that they've come in for strong money. Part Blake is understandably one of the favourites. I was part of the... the, the the group that were looking at him at the back end of last year thinking this is a real English derby dog I'm not fully sure that that project has come to fruition just yet I, I don't think he's looked the same greyhound this year than he did last that said he's still you know, obviously hugely hugely talented tracker um, he he can go up strong he motors down the back and he generally stays much better than he certainly stayed in his trial stake so I, I would take that run with a pinch of salt but I still like to see him returning to his very very best form from the back end of last year OK, well, let's have a little look at Park Blake in, in action then. This was winning at Sherbourne Park on the, the 9th of April earlier this year. He is lightly raced um, for, for his age, Ian, an Irish St. Ledger finalist. Um, 29.65 win he, he's got on his card at, at Toaster as well. Is he, a, is he worthy of his place as the shortest-priced Irish train runner then? If you'd asked me this time... Oh, sorry, if you'd asked me sort of last late November, shall we say, early December, I'd have said, yes, absolutely. I think this dog would be an 8-1 to favourite the Derby by the time we get around to it. But as I've said, I just don't think we've seen the very best of them this year. Um, this was a good run in Shelburne Park, tying up a little bit up the home straight. Um, I'd paint Trap 3 in his back if I could. I know he ran one run well there from Trap 1, but I think Trap 3 is his box. If you got Trap 3 every night, he'd be very close to the final. Um, he's a very, very talented greyhound. I just like, I'd just like to see one or two runs like we saw at the back end of last year. OK, that is Park Blake, the shortest priced Irish trained runner at the moment in this year's Greyhound Derby. Big thanks to um, RPG TV, SOS and Grand Racing Ireland for all the footage we'll be bringing you in this preview show. What, you got any thoughts on Park Blake, Tony? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's got a few question marks hanging over him. Firstly, I mean, he did win the trial stake, but it, it, it wasn't sort of blew, blew, blew anybody away. And you've got to take into account the way the draws worked out. I mean... That's a derby semi that they're in in the first round, so dog's got to produce the goods. And he's the shortest price. We've we've always got to take note of the... Uh, we can sometimes be ignorant and not do your homework. Go into this derby and I'll find out more about these these Irish dogs. Um, we can keep saying they've not won a toast the derby, but the facts are, you know, two-thirds of the field last year were Irish trained, so again, we're expecting them to have a big say in it. And it proved what the Irish dogs can do. Wide open, no look round toaster. First heat of the Maiden Derby, what a sensational run. You know, that's that's the beauty of the Irish dogs. That is how good they are. OK, well, we'll continue the Irish loving for the moment and look at some of the other contenders then. You know, we're going to bring in Cullivani Calvin now. This is winning at Shelbourne Park back on the, uh, the 9th of April. Now, this was some effort from Greyhound and Trainer. First start for over a year. He has trialled at Toaster twice since and put 29... 28 up on the ball. Tell us about this one. Yeah, I think it was 29, 18 plus 10, if I'm not wrong, am I? Um, but no, he, he's obviously a very, very talented greyhound. He looked a really, really promising pup at the back um, at the middle of last year. It was was running in a valuable unraced stake at Shelburne Park. I think he mixed, missed the final through injury and then he didn't appear until this run. So he's had a, a lengthy, lengthy layoff in his car, but he's trained by Michael O'Donovan, you know. You know, when it comes to when it comes to training greyhounds, there 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 are and and we're probably never any better. He's just an absolute legend of the sport. He's won many Irish derbies. He's champion up the field in the course. And he just knows a greyhound and uh, Coolavani Calvin. He's just an exceptionally fast dog. And and the fact that he is taking his chances. Michael shied away with a couple of his other dogs. Dog called Coolavani Hoffa did trial once at Toaster, but decided not to come with him. He's brought Coolavani Calvin, and the money did come from. Um, and that's that's um. That's telling. Um, there, there's a few punters in the kennel. And for this fellow to come to Toaster, to have his money on, yeah, they're obviously confident that this dog is as good and, and will be as good as he looked like he would be at the start of or in the middle of last year. Um, I just can't have him at the price purely because he's so inexperienced. He's had that long, long layoff. And just, I think there's dogs there, certainly of the Irish challengers, that are twice his price, you know, and maybe even more, that have as much pace um, and and with a lot more experience and more toughened up, shall we say. And not ideal, you know, I'm sure he's a clean bill of health now, but he's, he's obviously had his, his problems and, you know, durability is a, a, a characteristic that a Derby dog needs. Do we, do we think he's going to withstand to, to six runs in a row? If they're backing him, and, and, you know, Michael O'Donovan's on the lead, they, they, he's had plenty of spins um, and I'd say they made sure they brought him back nice and slowly, had him plenty fit enough to run his first race. They got through the race 
I think that's a great relief, and I think he's had plenty of trials. I'd say he'll come here fit as a fiddle. I wouldn't be too worried about the the, the fitness concerns. You know, what, while he had one injury, you know, there's other dogs in the derby that have had two or three breaks in their career. I'd be more concerned of. Okay, well as you say, certainly in good hands. You like what you say there, Tony? Yeah, I mean he could clearly run the dog, but again you've got to look at the first round assignment. He's going to have to be bang on the money. He's taken on the defending champion. You've got to sign it, Denver. In trap three, Mingler's Popeye, who is no back number. So, again, the draw, you know, he's, he's got to come away running, get it all right. He's in trap one as well, so be interesting to see. Yeah, that is a, a serious, serious heat, that one, for sure. Right, let's move on then to Balinabola Ed, who is a, certainly a very, very well-regarded well type. This was winning the uh, prestigious and lucrative uh, Conan and Kirby Memorial Heat of round three. And this dog broke the track record at Tralee, Ian, before coming into this competition. Um, he's put a 29.42 on the board at Toast. The ball we're expecting he can go a lot quicker than that, right? Yeah, absolutely, no doubt. I, I think this is the most wonderful moving greyhound. He has it all. He has early speed. He's massive down the back and he stays on very, very strongly. Um, you know, he, he just he just seems to have it all. Um, I, I think experience is the only thing that he doesn't really have in abundance. But that said, he's had enough racing now and, um, you know, a couple of clean runs in the early rounds and, and we could see this fellow certainly disputing favouritism come the third round. I, I have no doubt about that. I think he is. I think he has everything in his locker. He was desperate and lucky in the Kirby final. He didn't miss. He missed the kick slightly. Now, he would have had to go some to pick up the winner but he wouldn't have been very far away. He got badly done in the corner, made a bike catching ground afterwards, stormed into the escape. He's just a dog that has it all. And I know Pat Buckley thinks the world of him, and yeah, I, I think the world of him too. Yeah, he's certainly a powerful mover. I think that's what you're going to need around Toaster. Well, let's move on then to Kildare, uh, who we're going to have a look at winning the semi-final of the Conan and Kirby Memorial at Limerick again. This was back on the 16th of April, and Ian... I mean, if you could bottle that break, um, this dog would be a real handful. He's very exciting. He's already put... I was actually at Toaster when he put 29-21 on the board, and this is a seriously exciting hound. Yeah, he only debuted in the opening round of this competition. You know, the fact that Peter Crone and, and, and the Comerfords decided that this dog was good enough to be thrown into the Kirby Memorial against some really red-hot um, opposition and perform as well as he did to the competition, he improved steadily through it. Now, that break was a bit of an outlier. He had never done that prior hasn't done it since um, and I think there was a bit of a false start that night I think something charged you saw there were a very staggered start so maybe don't take too much into that but but I had hinted through the competition that it was going to happen sooner rather than later I think he will be a starter I think he will be a dog with loads of early speed he's a very talented greyhound of all the Irish going into the competition he's the you know in quotation marks could be anything dog he, he really could be anything I think the, there's no ceiling to where he could end up. Um, the fact that the Comerfords even named him Kildare is telling in itself. Um, I, I, perhaps his price, he's well found now at this stage. I think people are backing him with promise in mind rather than proven ability. But there's no question. He's exceptionally, exceptionally talented. And it'd be no surprise to see him going deep in the competition. Yeah, he's really exciting. And uh, as you say, we talk about proven ability. Let's move on to Romeo Magico, who... I thought it was a little bit unlucky, actually, in the Easter Cup final um, earlier this year. Irish Laurels finalist. Um, but we're going to have a look at him, Ian, here. Uh, winning at toast, the beating a certain Thorn Falcon in a trial stake um, only a couple of weeks ago. And uh, this lad is, is proven, right? He's, he's top, top draw. Yeah, just watch him off the second bend here. He gets clipped on the heels, right? Just goes down slightly. All of a sudden, the momentum was with Thorn Falcon. For any dog, I mean any dog in training to do that, the Thorn Falcon, to contain him into the third bend from that situation is very impressive. Didn't come as a surprise to us. This time last year, he would certainly have been beat. He, he's much stronger this year than he was last year. He's definitely amongst our top three or four fastest greyhounds in training in Ireland. Um, there's definitely more to come from him. That was his first run in, in quite a while. His problem has always been consistency. His consistency at boxes more so. Last year, he actually came over to Toaster as a very raw youngster. He had shown real promise in the opening round of the Kirby, got knocked out second round. Uh, I think he got knocked out of the consolation competition, came to Toaster, trialed reasonably well, got knocked out of the opening round or second round, I can't remember. Has always been a dog capable of a one-off run. 
this year he's a very different animal. He's much more consistent in his in his movements. He, if he's if he's led into the corner, you're not going. Well, he'll finish down the field. He'll keep going. He's massive down the back straight. He stays on much better than he did last year. Now, don't get me wrong. He's not a college cause or anything like it. He's no Westmead Hawk. He's not going to be coming from lengths behind dogs. But if you look back at that Easter Cup final run, that that tells you what he's capable of. I'd sooner you know track. The, the back straight was another second and a half longer in Toaster. It suit him right down to the ground. But he's definitely a greyhound that if he can find his trapping boots, he'll play a big part in the derby. No question about it. He's as fast as anything in the competition. But again, those first three, four strides are going to be his issue. OK, well, he's certainly in good hands as well. Graham Holland, five greyhound derby finalists in the last five years. So they are certainly a kennel knocking on the door. Finally, one to look at from the Irish team, Scarty Yank. This was winning a derby trial stake at Tralee. And this was a really, really good field, Ian, back in March. This is a very lightly race, but a very well-regarded type for Pat Buckley, isn't it? Yeah, Pat thinks the world of him. Um, he, he has like he has massive pace, really does have massive pace. The one thing he's not done in recent times that he used to do in his youth, he used to be an absolutely lightning starter. Um, he'd get caught a little bit into the corner and then power home again. You see him here on the outside. He just arrives with a rush. Like, these aren't bad dogs he's picking up. Like, these are top-class greyhounds he's picking up. And he ran away from them. He can trap much better. It's just not quite happening this year. But when he does happen to hit the lids, um, he, he could go some... I, 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 at prices that he was available when he first went into the bed, and I had to play. I just simply had to. Because, as I said, he, he's probably as fast, if not faster, than eight of the top ten in the market but it's a case of getting his trapping in order but there's no question he'll be given every opportunity through the stake you know pat buckley is a is a, is a master trainer and um if he thinks he's good enough and and one of the top two or three from his kennel that's good enough for me yeah, pat buckley master trainer understatement there obviously won this uh, competition two years ago with dear jet sydney and at the semi-final stage last year his knock the ball Sid and Dear Jet Sydney were the first two in the betting. Uh, Peter Cronin has gone on record to say his strongest team he's ever sent over. What about Liam Dowling this year, Ian? Um, he got two through to the final last year. He obviously went ever so close with the likes of Ballymat Vicking in recent years as well. How's his team shaping up? Um, it, it's probably a very different team than Liam would normally bring over, with the exception of Bally McFerwin, who was obviously disputing favouritism in last year's decider. Um, the rest are quite young and and, and and coming forward. They're they're very inexperienced. It's you know it's hard to it's hard to judge them. The one thing he's bringing over is unlimited pace. The dogs he's bringing over are exceptionally fast. Um, Bally McFerwin has handled Toaster. I like his, it's been a, a tip, very untypical Liam Dowling sort of this, um, preparation. He hasn't been overly raced, he's, but he's trialed very well. Uh, but normally Liam is not afraid to race them. I just think Bally McFerwin last year, I think he was a very inexperienced, very immature greyhound. And if you remember, it was quiet, quiet, quiet. All of a sudden he turned up in Derby final night, crowd. And he couldn't even get him on parade. You know, there was an issue there. It was just a lack of maturity. He'd probably seen crowds for the very first time and it showed in his display and his performance on the night. Um, I, I just think people wrote him off a little bit too quickly. I, I saw people sort of slagging the dog off when he was up for sale for, for biggish money on, 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 on online last year. And people were saying he's not worth the sight of that. Well, he's, you know, disputing favours in the Mingus Derby final and here he is back again. And I wouldn't be surprised if it went very, very well for Liam Dowling. The two I do want to mention from Liam's kennel, though, are... Hudu Brown and Bally McBain. Now they're very similar. Like they're cut from the same cloth. They're both big dogs, lack early, but the engine is unbelievable. Like from the second bend home, they're as fast as anything in training. Bally McBain um, picked up Greyhounds in Shelburne Park the other week. He came from five or six things behind them and beaten five or six. He's just immensely strong. And Hudu Brown, he's big and he's a little bit cumbersome as yet. He's like, he's really big. Like, he's about 85, 86 pounds. Like he's probably 39 kilos, your 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 money. Um, I, I, I'm going to be tipping up him for a small each way bet because he's just incredibly fast. The other night in Shelburne Park came from 12 behind a Greyhound to win and it was the same greyhound that he picked up the 28-45 in the opening round to Brodge Stick to the night. If you look at the card, he, that was his first win. He had seven or eight starts. He ran through the juvenile. He ran through the Kirby. The dogs he was running against are, you know, amongst our very best classic winners. And he was the fastest dog in every race he ever ran in. Just the problem is he's leaving too much for himself to do and finding a bit of traffic. But yeah, keep an eye on him. No, Liam, I, I don't think Liam's coming over expecting to win the Derby. But I think he's hopeful they'll have a few in the latter stages. OK, 
Okay, well, always a name to look out for that Ballymac prefix as well there. Right, um, of course, you'll be able to watch all the action live on Racing Post Greyhound TV. You'll also be able to follow the Derby a little bit closer with the brand new weekly RPG TV email off the row. You can sign up at racingpost.com slash off the row. Exclusive tips, news, analysis and previews directly to your inbox throughout the Derby and beyond. This will be a weekly email, so make sure you signed up for that. Right then, that is the Irish big guns. Let's talk about some UK trained <clears throat> big guns then, shall we? And there is no other place to start than the anti-post favourite and the defending champion, Patrick Janssen's Thorn Falcon. And this is exactly what he did 12 months ago, Tony, in that derby final. What a performance it was from the Stripes. Yeah, I mean, he, he hit the ground running. He won the maiden derby, uh, Dave, over course and distance, and then went into the derby, obviously stepping up in class. But it's horses for courses. Red Rum loved Aintree. Thorn Falcon loves Toaster. And that's, that's a massive part of this derby if you run the track. That's probably a good 75% of going on to win this derby. And he's got a, he's look at the size of him. He's like a horse on the back end and he's got a serious engine. He had it all that year in the maiden derby and the derby proper. And in his favour this year, has to be, uh, there aren't too many wide seeds that you can see being in the latter stages. So he's almost guaranteed to, to get his draw in every round. And he is. And, and you can see with, with him being a big frame dog, he, he leans, he has to lean to round the bends and he's just he loves the track you take him elsewhere he didn't perform on his travels he just toaster was built for form falcon and form falcon was built for toaster yeah, well, he's certainly one to beat not the only star from patrick jansen's kennel though because the hi highly well regarded lotaro we're going to have a look at now now this was going back to february 20th of february this was winning at toaster 29 15 when 29 15 was an exceptional time here in the black jacket um, a dog that has been turned over at short prices when he started out his career for me tony it looks as if he's he's come of age um, he got to the final of the laurels and he's got a massive engine it's hard to see this dog just not keep into qualifying yeah i mean it, it was a stunning debut in a maiden uh over course and distance back in november he didn't really build on it in the puppy derby over the christmas period but they left him off brought him back in february and he's shown his skills once again you can see there's still more to come from the dog. He's still a little bit inexperienced and green, but I thought the exploits in the laurels at Perry Bar suggested that the dog's manned up and is matured yeah. as a greyhound. And if he can just brush up on them trapping skills, he's going to be a formidable opponent. If this derby was a time trial where he just had a solo trial, Latoro would be in the top 10, posting the fastest times throughout, for sure. It's just the start. If he can just start to brush up on that trapping, He's a match for any thereafter. Yeah, he's a monster. He's got massive, massive back straight pace. Lotaro. Right, let's have a look then at the winner of this year's RPG TV Juvenile, which was Paul Young's bubbly Apache, a dog that has, has had his injury problems. Um, it will be a question on whether he can stay sound throughout this derby, but I will confess to have him backed him because, as I mentioned a little bit earlier on, I think you want a fast, early pace, seeded dog that can escape. Now, he didn't quite escape in this juvenile, but to the third bend, this dog is ferocious. Yeah, I like this performance because I was expecting him to just win the early battle and, and put the race to bed, but the attitude that he showed, he had, to, he had to dig deep. I mean, admittedly, there was a little bit of crowding in behind, but the puppy classic that he won at Nottingham last year was very good. You've had Kula Vaniani come out of it, Belmore Sally. Admittedly, more staying types, those two bitches that I've mentioned, but the thing with this fella, the only thing that concerns me is the under-racing of him. He probably yeah. got handled with care on him. He's fragile. But if they can sort of keep on top of him, I think he's a runner for sure. Yeah, I think he's as fast as we've got over here. It's just a case of whether he can stay sound throughout the derby. Let's hope he can for connections. Right then, we're now going to look at, officially, the fastest dogs at the moment over the 500 metres at Toaster, and that is Sporting Chile, trained by Seamus Carhill, who knows a thing or two about winning a derby at Toaster. This was earlier this month, 28 99 in the black jacket. We go back a few years, Tony, and the, the astute missile, fabulous scenes, Seamus and his team. Um, are we looking at another derby champion here in Sporting Chile? The, the win wasn't a surprise. The clock was. The, the actual time. I mean, he absolutely destroyed the field. He'd shown pace at Hove, admittedly, the dog, but never really dropped the hint that he was going to be doing this type of run, Dave. Again, 
if he can bottle this, he, 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 he'd be Derby favourite. But I've just got my suspicions that he's, he's going to fall foul at missing the break, and you ain't going to be posting 29, low 29s if you're doing that. OK, right. Well, a greyhound, if you're after a, a, an exciting ground to come from off the pace and not one that necessarily needs to find a fast start every single round, then Amaze Me Seb, trained by Richard Reese. Uh, we're going to have a look at here. This was back on the 20th, 24th of April, uh, and this is a last-to-first dog. And this is a dog that you have to expect is going to keep qualifying, Tony, just with his running style. Yeah, he made a, he made a winning debut at Clonmel September last year. If you look at his Irish card, he's nothing, nothing flashy at all at Shelbourne and Fells thereafter. But he went to Monmore, which wasn't suited to him. It was a speed track Monmore. But Toaster, I mean, absolutely, really has turned him on. And that is what I'm saying about certain dogs, Dave. Toaster is a different generation of racing. Certain dogs thrive on it. And amaze me, Seb, intelligent track craft finishes very strongly. Yeah, what a story it would be a well for trainer Richard Reese. His granddad won the Derby, his dad won the Derby. It went so, so close a couple of years ago with Southwood Jet. Could amaze me, Seb, go all the way. Certainly one to keep an eye on for each way punters. Right, as ever, um, there are a million, hundreds and millions and thousands of, of specials available for the punters to get stuck into, for the Greyhound Derby, a trainer to win it, bitch to win it, the track record to be broken again, I think it's about 8 to 11, 4 to 6. Fastest sectional market um, is always a very, very popular one. Ian, have you got any thoughts on any of the specials? I haven't really delved into them too much, Dave, to be honest. I, I'm just happy enough to, to try and find the winner. That, that'll do me. Um, of the of the trainers, uh, the trainer specials, of the Irish trainers, I think Peter Cronin will be a, a shorter price this year than he's ever been. I think his team is very strong. I think Pat Buckley, though, is probably bringing over the best of the, the, best of the Irish teams. And what about yourself, Tony? Fancy that track record to go again? I, I do think it will go. I mean, if you dissect the derby, you've got your 29.50 to 29.70 dogs solid. Then you've got a pool of dogs that are all doing around 29.30, but then you've got those dogs that can go low. And I, I, I can't put my finger on why the dogs are putting up these times. Some dogs I'm scratching me thinking, I can't believe you've done that, because toasters are lung bursting 500 metres. But I, I, I did say on, on, on RPG TV the other week, maybe with the advertising board in, dogs are seeing the hair and they're chasing harder. I don't know, but the, the times are a lot quicker and it's not just one off. A lot of dogs are going low now, and I think it will go to track record. And we think if it's going to go, it's probably going to go in the, the, the opening rounds, right, where the racing can sometimes be a little bit less competitive. Yeah, I mean, again, it, it could be just... To be truthful, it might be another surprise dog, and you look down the card and think, who's that that's done the clock? It's not necessarily could be a big name, but... There's, there's plenty of dogs in there capable of doing it, Dave. Well, there you go. There are plenty of specials. And keep your eyes peeled in the Racing Post this week. We'll be covering all of those with all the different bookmakers as well. Right, let's get a first round nap then off the lads. Um, Thursday, Friday and Saturday night, 32 first round heats. All live on Racing Post, Greyhound TV from Toaster. Um, what do you like, Tony? I've gone for a big price, Dave. I've, I've gone for Richard Reese. Droopy's Good Time runs in the 826 Heat 7. She made a winning debut at five on at Nottingham um, in, a, in a maiden event when first arriving on the scene, but never really come forward. She's a little bit clumsy, but since they stepped her up to six bends, she's got a little bit of confidence under her belt. She won a dual distance event at Monmore and won over the 712, the extreme distance at, at Toaster. And I, I think she's run well in a couple of trial stakes. Admittedly, she won one and then she was a little bit unlucky when challenging. She lacks a yard, but the heat that she's in there's a lot of speed, and I can see a little bit of inside congestion. So I'll definitely be framing up Droopy's good time. And eight to one around the eight to one mark could even nick land the spoils at a big price. Right, there you go. That's on Thursday night, heat number seven. Tony's best bet of the first round. What about yourself, Ian? Yeah, I, I was sort of struggling because you know I didn't want to go for too many short price ones, but I I thought Bobsleigh Dream would certainly win from trap one. Um, I thought all about Ted was ready to take off, even though he's beaten quite quite comfortably in his two trial sticks to date. I, I think there's a much better run in him. Um, I think he was clearly he was showing plenty of pace in both those stouts. Um, I thought Balnabola Ed would win his contest, but the one I'm going to side with, um, he's taking on one of uh, one of your anti-post selections, Dave, is uh, Barefoot Supremo. 
uh, he's just a dog that Paul Hennessy's always thought he was going to be a, a real sort of derby dog I, I didn't quite see it until this year and he, he appeared in the Easter Cup showed loads of pace in the Easter Cup loves to get after greyhounds and I just thought if probably Apache was needing them to run he hasn't had many starts he's only had trials and, and you know there's no difference there, there's a big difference between races and trials I thought both Barefoot Supremo from an, an inside draw might just get you know, turned relatively close and, and if he does I thought he'd pick up something like Bubbly Apache in the closing yard so just at a bigger price I think he's around 11 to 4 3 to 1 uh, Barefoot Supreme and he could be even bigger on the day so yeah maybe a, uh, he'll be the one I'll nominate but as I've said I do believe that both Bob's Day Dream and All About Ted will win Okay, so perhaps a little tricksy there, if you like, if you want to follow Ian's uh, selections in the first round. I'm going to go with uh, an Irish trained runner, formerly Irish trained runner, now uh, under the care of Seamus Gorn just for the derby, and that's going to be Fast Fit Paddy, who won the Shelburne Open 600, really taken to the traps at Toaster, and I think he will do the business on Saturday night in Heat 14. Have you delved much into the first round, Tony? Any jollies to think we uh, could sure, get beat in the first I, I round? Mean, I, I fancy form the form rebel dog a uh, bit unlucky to be withdrawn from the quarterfinal stages um, last year and obviously it's well known that the injury that he's come back from but again toaster just seems to turn the dog on and that's that's the key to uh, form rebel the way he picked his way through in a trial stake recently suggests that the dog's better than ever and I, I thought he was a play in the first round any vulnerable fancy dogs what about dealish frankie with swift iconic oh, that, that, inside? That, well that that is the race where i've gone for me um yeah. like a bit of value but it'll um, be it, will it be favorite dealish frankie for that race i think it'll be free to field on 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 the night i really do i mean if the track's running quick you, you your sprinting pace of swift iconic could easily free wheel home i mean it takes some getting the 500 meters but if the track's running quick and i don't think antigua cuddles in four is as badly drawn as looks on, on, on paper, so... You can't have them all in that run. No, no, I can't, but <laughs> that's, that was the heat that I would have cringed if I owned any right. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Right then, let's get down to business, shall we? Should we get the outright view from everybody? I'll give you a reminder of the outright book. Um, defending champion Thorn Falcon is your jolly with most firm, 16 to 1, Park Blake, could have any cow, me, butter, butter, Ed. Lotaro, sing along Sally at 33 to 1, Kildare, and wide open as well. And then down the card, um, sign it aces, your next one in at 40 to 1. Greyhound of the year. Right, I'll give you the honour then, Tony. Um, who do you like in this year's derbies? You can go for whatever you like, as many as you like, whatever price is. Talk well, to me. I've done what, we, what I normally do, Dave. I'll pick one English, one Irish, and a, and a triple figure value dog that I can see keep qualifying. Gone for Lotaro for Patrick Janssen's. I just think. The first round draws worked out well. I, I don't want to see my anti-post selections getting through scrappy. I want to look, see them looking pretty posting a fast time. And I think Latoro will throw down a marker by winning his respective heat. So I, I'm confident with Latoro for the English side of things. And with Kildare, again, Peter Cronin's dog will be delighted with the draw. Be very short price to win his heat. He is drawn bang on the rails, but I also think he's a dog that can cope in three, four, two, and one. I think he's, he's a progressive as Ian Fortune touched on. He's far from the finished article, still an unknown quantity. The Kirby Memorial is always solid. And the Swords uh, Rex dog has since taken off in, in the produce at Clonmel. That's really good form. So Kildare can kick off his campaign in style. And I'm going to be with Amaze Me Seb. I know he's in with uh, Latoro in the first round, but the way that he's run toast, though, he's only 31 kilos, but he's an intelligent dog. Each way play this one each in, in a big way. At triple figures. Absolutely. And do remember, really favourable each way terms in the Greyhound Derby. Always a tremendous bet in heat. Quarter of the odds, first six home. If any bookmaker not paying the first six home at this stage, run away, run a mile away from there. Should be the first six home quarter of the odds. Right then, Ian, um, it's a big price that there's a UK trained ground amongst your team. Talk to me. Who are you putting up for this year's Derby? Well, I could have mentioned a couple of UK trained greyhounds. I could have gone with Fast Fit Paddy or Scooby Prince, who, who were literally Irish trained We've for two weeks ago. We've and now they're English. Um, before I go into my selections, I just want to mention there, Amaze Me Seb, chatting to Charlie Reese the other day. He's a cracking young fella, firstly. But uh, he's very sweet and Amaze Me Seb. And I'd love to see him qualifying and going a long way for them. Like you, I, I agree, just has really taken the toaster. And it'd be great to see him in the latter stages of the derby. That said, I am uh, I'm more than pinning my... my tinted green uh, glasses on and I'm looking through them and I'm going to go for uh, I'm going to pick out four Irish greyhounds and it's purely at prices rather than um, you know at, at what I 
you know, I think they'll they'll win it in a sense where I, I don't think there's any Irish dog standing out as such. But um, I've gone for Balnebul Ed as my main selection. I think he's an exceptionally fast greyhound. I, I've said I, I've put my my reasons forward that I just think he has it all. Uh, just hope that he takes to the traps. The same could be said for Scarty Yank. They're the two Pat Buckley runners that have taken out Balnebul Ed and Scarty Yank. I think they're much bigger prices than they should be compared to some of the Irish. Like you know, with all due respect to the likes of Wide Open and Part Blake and of any Calvin, I'd, I'd have Balnebul Ed ahead of them all. Um, that's the way things are going at present. Um, Hoodoo Brown is one of the big, big price that I mentioned earlier on. Um, probably the triple figures are a bit disappeared now at this stage, but there's still a good 66 to one available. Um, you may be able to hunt around for a little bit bigger than that, but just a massively fast greyhound. I just hope he takes the place, but just watch this fellow from the second bent home. He, he's sensational. And the other one I'm going to mention is Romeo Magico. For a dog of his talent, for him to be available at 33 and 40 to one just doesn't make sense to me. I, I think he's every bit as fast as the top two, three in the market, and I, I think he represents a bit of value. But like that, I think there's so many good dogs out there. I think there's real value there. Don't be afraid to back anything at a, at a you know, up to 66 to one. Um, I, I'd love to have 25 darts to throw. And even then you mightn't get the winner, but I think it's going to be exceptional derby. No, I'd echo that as well. 192 hopefuls chasing 175,000 pounds. Do try and get to Toaster if you can. If you can't, of course, you can watch all the action live on Racing Post Greyhound TV. You'll be able to see the stars every race of every round live on RPG TV. Sky 437, Freesat 250, Freeview 264, and of course on the stream, sportystuff.tv. Tony, I thank you for your expertise, your time, uh, and hopefully we've found a few winners. Yeah, one thing about this derby, Dave, and every derby, guaranteed frills and spills for sure. Ian, will we see you over here at any point during this derby? You'll see me derby final night. That's, that's the first time I'll be over, I'm afraid. Um, first time I'll actually ever get racing a toaster. I've been there a few times for various things, like a couple of these previews over the years, but I've never actually been there for a race night. Um, from what I've seen of it, the most perfect place to host a party. And uh, that's what I'll be there for. Absolutely. Right, good stuff. Thank you uh, to both Ian and Tony for their time. Hopefully we have guided you to a winner or two. Good luck to everybody involved if you are lucky enough to be involved in any of the 192 hopefuls. Thank you for watching and of course please do remember to gamble responsibly.